indeed. Please join me for our opening prayer found in your bulletins. Let us pray. We worship you, O Lord God, and give thanks to you for your glory and power, which you show to your servants in your wonderful world. All the things which we enjoy are from your mighty hands, and you alone are to be praised for all the blessings of the life that now is. Make us thankful to you for all your mercies, and more ready to serve you with all our heart. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. special Thanksgiving and new members worship service, uh, one of our favorite services of the year. We have a lot to be thankful for uh, as Christians generally and as Americans specifically and uh, living here in this part of the world as well. So I hope you're ready to worship and to give thanks this morning. On the back of your bulletin, a few announcements to mention. Oh, and let me also welcome those of you who are watching online. We're glad that you are with us uh, this morning. Immediately after the service, we are going to jump to Christmas and Advent, because the next time we get here will be after Thanksgiving, so it makes it okay. Uh, so if you're able to spend a, a half hour, 45 minutes with us to decorate different parts of the church, we would love to have you stay. We always have fun doing it. Uh, kids, you are always helpful in that, so we expect you guys to be here. Little hands to get into high areas. We'll lift you up and get to the top of the tree. So. Uh, so that means next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And so that begins the Advent season. We hope you can be here with us for that. It's not listed, but I'll have it in next week just to give you a heads up. Thursday, December 16th, it will be our annual Christmas potluck dinner here at the church. Uh, we didn't have it last year because of COVID, but we look forward to having it again this year where we eat together, we have some, uh, we do some fun games together, we sing. It's a, it's a fun evening. Hope you can make it. That is Thursday, December 16th. This Tuesday, uh, if you pull out, take a look at your insert, there is a Hillsdale County Community Thanksgiving service. Uh, this is in Hillsdale at the Hillsdale Baptist Church on Bacon Road. Um, it is presented by the Hillsdale Area Ministerial Association, which I'm the president of. Uh, I won't be preaching at it. Uh, Chip Faulkner, the pastor at Hillsdale Baptist Will, and I'm excited to hear him. He's a great preacher. Uh, I'll per be participating in it a little bit, but not too small room this time. But you are all welcome to come. It is at 7 o'clock. I believe it's in probably about a 45 minutes to an hour of service with uh, refreshments afterwards. So, uh, so I commend that to you. There is no youth group today, so I sent that out to the parents but just so all the students know as well, no youth group tonight. Any other announcements that should be mentioned? Linda. Yep. Get your pencils out. Um, we have a number of things coming up for the fellowship. Uh, the veterans boxes and um, the deadline for adding to them. Um, right now we have seven or eight. And the deadline for adding to them is the 5th of December. Um, on the 10th, we will be assembling the boxes. We wrap them with Christmas paper and uh, try to even them out so everybody gets at least similar things. Um, and we will be delivering them on the 11th. So if you'd like to take part in any of that, you are all welcome. Um, we're also having a uh, women's fellowship to try to do something special at, in December, and we're having a out to dinner, you know, now that restaurants are open, um, 
We're going out to dinner at Highland Beach on the 9th of um, September. And we'll be, meet at the church at noon, right? No. No. It's going to be at the restaurant. We're going to be at the restaurant at noon. So if you need a ride um, about 20 minutes to 12, stop here and we'll make sure you get picked up. It helps if you let me know because then they won't forget. So any of those things you are welcome to come to or participate in um, if you have been of particularly those who have been of, of help this, this year. Uh, we'd love to have you come, but we are welcoming to everyone. So if you want to just get out for lunch, come with us. Okay? Is there a list somewhere of what you could suggest for the boxes? Yes, and I didn't bring it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it might be. What? You, you have ideas. I have ideas. Um, one of the things that I read is um, um, someone went to a food bank and talked to some of the recipients of the food bank, and they said, this is wonderful, but what we don't have are anything fresh, uh, you know, fresh meat. Um, we get macaroni and cheese, don't have any milk. Okay, so it's really hard to eat stuff like that. We get cereal, we don't have any milk. We get pancake mix. You know, we can make pancakes, but we have nothing to put on it. You know, the syrup. Mm -hmm. So, so think beyond the, the obvious and what goes with it. You know, what with powdered milk. Powdered milk. Powdered milk is all usually available. So I, I put it. That's not what I read. So can okay. openers. Oh, if you can't get into the can. <laughs> Pretty hard to get, you know, enjoy. Um, so, you know, anything you would need to prepare a meal, um, think that way. Okay. And we're assembling them like the day before they're being delivered, so fresh produce would still stay fresh. The milk yes, would, would still be fresh. Yes, right? it would. And, if, and the deadline for it is really a week earlier. However, if you're going to bring something fresh or homemade, which they really enjoy, butter. I mean, they don't get butter. So, you know, stuff like that that we use. Oil. Um, if you are going to bring something fresh, uh, we're going to assemble them on the temp. So if you could drop it off before the temp, you can drop it off at any of our houses or in the rear of the church. And if it's fresh, we're more than happy to bring it down and use it. Thank you, Linda. Any other questions oh. you may ask? Yep. I will bring a list. Of All right. Any other announcements? Amanda? Just a real quick word. We had our first program practice yesterday that went well. Parents, please have your children practicing reading over their parts. Our next program practice will be December 4th, which is a Saturday, here at the church from 2 until 4. So keep that on your calendars. Thank you. Who else? All right. We read in Psalm 133 this, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard. And in the New Testament, we read this in Hebrews 10. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. It is good for us to be part of a church. It is good for us to be part of a Christian family. Uh, Christian, as I'll say in the sermon today, the Christian faith, while we have individual faith, is a communal faith. It is something that we are called into as a family together. And specifically for all of us here, this is our church family here in Somerset. And so it's my honor and privilege today that we have a few people who would like to join that membership. So I'd like to invite up Andrea Herr, John and Sue Opal, as well as uh, the chair of our deacons, Terry Taylor, to come forward. Scriptures teach us that the church is the household of God, 
the body of which Christ is the head, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. As believers in Christ, we are related to each other as members of his body. The persons before us today have been brought into this holy relationship through faith in Christ and by the work of the Holy Spirit. Having been examined and approved for membership in this church, they come to be publicly received and welcomed by our congregation. And I can tell you, it was a close call for some of them, all right, in the examination process. I won't, I won't name names, all right? <laughs> but it is wonderful to have these three up here. As I was saying last week when we had our special meeting for membership, uh, these three are known commodities. They have been around for a long time. In fact, uh, John and Sue, they had to go back and check their records because they couldn't remember, you know, like, how many years has it been? Uh, it has been like seven. seven years, yep. And Andrea, we're not going to ask how many years it's been for you because it's been since the day you were born a number of years. In fact, we could say even nine months prior to that. So it is, and I am very happy today because, of course, when I first started here as a youth pastor back in the day, Andrea was one of the youth in my church, so it's wonderful to see those youth like her and Stacia, among others, take that step and say, yes, I've been a part of this church, but I want to make officially become a member of this church. So a few questions for you. First, do you confess faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and do you desire above all else to live for him? So please say, I do. I do. Do you confess agreement with our church's statement of faith and covenant? If so, please say, I do. And finally, do you desire to join Somerset Congregational Church today? Let me encourage you, if you have your bulletins, pull out your bulletin. There is an insert that's entitled Church Membership Covenant. As we walk through this with John, Sue, and Andrea, for those of you who are members of the church, it is a helpful reminder of some of the expectations and responsibilities of a church member, especially in a church like ours, which is a congregational church. It is it means that the work of the church is done yeah. not just by this handsome-looking, very smart pastor, but by the whole people, all right? So, I don't know why I said that, but I did, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having sec insecurity issues, apparently, all right? So, having received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and having been baptized, and being in agreement with our church's statement of faith and covenant, and having been led by the Holy Spirit to unite with the Somerset Congregational Church family, do you commit yourself to God and to the other members of this church to do the following? One, will you protect the unity of your church by acting in love toward other members, by refusing to gossip, by following the leadership of this church? If so, please say, I do. Second, will you share the responsibility of your church by praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched to attend, by warmly welcoming those who visit? If so, please say, I do. Will you third, serve the ministry of your church by discovering your gifts and talents, by being equipped to serve by your pastor and, and leaders here at the church, and by developing a servant's heart? If so, please say, I do. And finally, fourth, will you support the testimony of your church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, and by giving regularly of your time, talents, and treasure. And so please say, I do. Let's join in prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bridegroom in heaven, our brother and captain, our cornerstone, our high priest. We thank you for the church. We thank you that while once we were strangers and aliens and rebels against you, you and your grace have not only saved us, but now through the adoption of our Heavenly Father, you regard us as your brothers and sisters. We thank you for those who have formally joined our church, John and Sue and Andrew. We are encouraged by their commitment not only to you, but to us as well. We grant that with us they may grow in peace and the knowledge of you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep them from falling and strengthen them in Christ-like living. Make them earnest and zealous in serving you and the church. 
Grant that by loving and being loved, blessing and being blessed, serving and being served, we may be prepared while we dwell together on earth for that perfect fellowship that awaits us above. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I have a question for the members of this church to them. Members of Somerset Congregational Church, do you welcome these new members and affirm your commitment to love them and share the, the work and fruits of, the, of this ministry with them? If so, please say, we do. <laughs> well, it is my honor and pleasure to extend to you the right hand of fellowship and welcoming you as the newest member to the Somerset Congregational Church. This would be a perfect time to give thanks to us. Got some official certificates for you. Now, guys, at the end of the service, please join me in the back, and that way everyone can come by and extend them. Right hand of fellowship, or in our COVID day, the right fist of uh, a bump, yeah. and just to welcome you to our church. But once more again, let's give thanks to the Lord for John and Sue. Now, if you'll pull out the Pew Bibles. And turn with me to Psalm 10, which is on page 850, for our responsive reading this morning. And before we responsibly read Psalm 10, let me give you a little introduction to what this psalm is all about. Psalm 10 is a lament, it's a psalm of sadness, designed for cases in which the wickedly, the wicked hotly pursue the poor, as it's Described in verse 2. These wicked could be faithless, wealthy Israelites, and the poor are the defenseless pious. While it was the task of the Davidic king to ensure justice by force if necessary, it was the task of the general public to pray and thus use a psalm like this during times of hardship and of injustice. So what we'll do is I'll read the Odd number verses, please resign with the even number verses, Psalm 10. Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? He boasts of the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. His ways are always prosperous. He is haughty, and your laws are far from him. He sneers at all his enemies. His mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait like a lion in cover. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and he drags them off in his net. His he says to himself, God has forgotten. He covers his face and never sees. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? Break the arm of the wicked and evil man. Call him to account for his wickedness. That would not be found out. The Lord is You hear, O Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them, and you listen to their cry. Amen. You'll please stand, if you're able, for 
our, uh, we have a series of songs here for this Thanksgiving season. Uh, the first two we've sung before, and this, the tune should sound very familiar for this one, so please stand for Abel.
Father, we are overcome with gratefulness and thankfulness this morning. It is right for us to praise your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to give thanks to the grateful heart, because as we just sang, you have been faithful all of our days. You've been faithful prior to all our days. You will be faithful for all days beyond us, because that is who you are. Father, we recognize, though, that life here sometimes can be a little messy. And we look around and we see others who are getting ahead in ways that are not right, are not good. 
There are times where we suffer at the hands of others unjustly, undeservingly so. And we wonder, Lord, what is going on here? Where are you? But Father, as we read in Psalm 10, we, we, we realize that you are with us, that you will hear our prayers. You do see the trouble and grief that we go through. You do consider it. You do act. Father, we are thankful that you are the helper of the fatherless, that you are the king forever. And even though we live in, among all these nations of the world, one day all nations will be gone. And it will just be your kingdom ruling forever. Father, when we are afflicted, when we are struggling, may we cry out to you. May we know that you are with us, that you are near us, that you are not far off, even though sometimes it feels like it. Father, that's when we need our faith to be encouraged, to step in and say, even though my eyes say otherwise, I know what you have done for me in Jesus Christ. I know what you are doing in my life now, and I know the hope, the promises I have in the future. And that is where I place my hope and trust today. Father, those are so, there are so many reasons for us to give thanks, but those are among the greatest of them all. And so as your people, we do say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, at this time, I'd like to invite up the children for this morning's children's message.
This time that children can exit for Children's Church. You'll notice we're going to go straight to the offering instead of the prayer time because we're going to have that after the message today. So at this time I'd like to invite up our ushers to receive this morning's offering. Scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses uh, 15 through 17. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the, and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer, for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. This is our, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Prayer, specifically corporate prayer, is primary to the church. As you read again in Mark eleven fifteen, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. Uh, now. It's interesting that many people just assume the reason Jesus was so upset in his righteous anger that he was flipping tables over and, and stopping people was because these people were gouging the poor. The thought was that they were, once they got to the temple area, they would mark up the prices of the sacrificial animals so that it would be very expensive, especially for the poor. But if that is the reason why, then why does it say that Jesus began driving out those who were buying and selling there? Both those who were purchasing and those who had set up 
a place in the market. Well, here is why Jesus is so upset. So here is the temple complex area in the day of Jesus. Here is the temple building, and of course, inside the temple is the Holy of Holies. That is the place where God was most prominent on earth. There, right there. If you want to be the, near God's presence, you want to seek God, the closer you can get to the Holy of Holies, that was bringing yourself near to God. And of course, only one person, one time a year, that chief priest, the high priest, could go into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Otherwise, in the temple itself, only the priest could enter into, the main area of the temple. Outside the temple, this little courtyard here, the male Israelites could enter. And of course, that's why this is called the women's court, because that was as close as the Jewish women could come. Meaning that this area all outside, all in here, this was called the court of the Gentiles. And if you can make it out, there's a little line right here that makes its way all the way around it. This was a yay foot high wall that separated the Gentiles from the Jews. In fact, the sign on it said something like, basically, if you were a Gentile and you go past this point, uh, you're, you're marking yourself for death. Death was the sentence. So you couldn't go past the line, which means that if you were not a Jew, if you were one a Gentile from any of the surrounding nations, and you wanted to come, and you were a God-fearing Gentile, as they were called, and you wanted to worship God, this was as close as you could come, right there. That was it, because you were not a Jew. Now, where do you think that they set up this marketplace? It was all in here. Now, this looks empty, right? This is what the, if you go down to the Hillsdale County Fairgrounds right now, that's what it looks like. But you know, if you go down to the Hillsdale County Fairgrounds during the fair, you know how many uh, people are there. You know how many tents are set up. You know that the, what the animals sound like and smell like, all right? Imagine trying to worship in the middle of all that, because that is what the Gentiles were trying to do. And Jesus looked at these God-fearing Gentiles who are outside the covenant, who desire to get as close as they can to the Lord, and what they're smelling, what they're hearing, all the haggling going on. And it's just packed. And Jesus is rightly upset. In fact, he's so upset, we learn not only is he flipping tables over, and he's keeping people from buying and selling, we learn in the very next verse that it says that he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple court. That's because people who were not even there to worship we're just using the temple courts as a shortcut to get from one part of Jerusalem to the next. And Jesus would have none of it. He says, enough. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And it's interesting that he says this. He's quoting Isaiah, who wrote this 700 years before this incident. My house shall be called a house of prayer. And this is true even now, 2,000 years past this incident. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Jesus does not say, my house shall be called a house of preaching. He doesn't say, my house shall be called a house of music. He doesn't say, my house shall be called a house of outreach. He does not say, my house shall be called a house of learning. He does not say, my house shall be called a house of fellowship. He says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. When people were to think of the temple, the first thing Jesus said that they should think about is prayer. What about our church? What's the first thing that enters our minds when we think of our church? Is it prayer? My house shall be called a house of prayer. In the New Testament, Paul instructs the young pastor named Timothy about worship. He says in 1 Timothy 2, 1, first of all, that request, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. And those are all just different terms for prayer. But Paul says, first of all, before anything else, a primary importance, pray. Timothy, you want to have a healthy church? You want to have a fruitful church? Pray. Have your people pray. In fact, the church itself was literally birthed into being through prayer. We think before the Pentecost, before the day of the church's 
uh, origin. We read this in Acts 1, 13-14. It says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. A Sabbath day walked from the city. And when they arrived, they, were, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Uh, those present were Peter, John, James, and I put dot, dot, dot. This lists all the 12 disciples, minus Judas, of course. They all joined together constantly in prayer. Along with them, uh, the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and uh, with his brothers. In Acts 2, the very next chapter, after Pentecost, we read this, that those who accepted his message were baptized. That is Peter's message. They were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Corporate prayer is primary to the church. Now that being true, the next question is, well, why? Why are we called to pray together? Well, as I mentioned during our time with, the, with new members, Christianity is not just an individual faith. It is a communal faith. Yes, we have individual faith. You, you can't be a Christian without individual faith, without deciding for yourself if you're going to follow Jesus or not. But once you do, well, you're not left on your own. You are brought into the family of God. And one of the things that we are called to do as a family is to support each other in prayer. Here's Paul seeking prayer from the church. In Romans 15, 30, Paul says, I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, Join me in my struggle. How? By giving, by coming, by doing. No, it says by praying to God for me. That's how you can struggle with me for the work that I'm doing. And also, we learn and grow in our prayers by hearing others pray. It empowers our individual prayer when we can gather here to be fed and to hear other people praying. So, we pray together because it is a communal faith, but also because praying together unifies us. Now, this, of course, is displayed in our physical gathering here this morning. But more than that, prayer displays a unity of spirit because prayer does at least two things. Prayer humbles us. When we come to the Lord in prayer, especially in confession, we are recognizing that we are sinners in need of God's mercy and grace, that we are weak, we need God's power. It's an old saying that says everyone is equal at the foot of the cross. And so when we come together in prayer, especially in prayers of, of confession of sin, we're all acknowledging all of us have need for God's mercy and grace. And none of us can do it in our own strength. But besides humbling us, unified uh, prayer together, praying together, corporate prayer, it also focuses us. It helps us to remember what is, what is primary and what is secondary. Because honestly, a lot of times when we pray on our own, sometimes the secondary becomes primary. But when we gather together, we call ourselves, we remind ourselves, oh right, this is what's primary. Jesus Christ is what's primary. His worship is what's primary. Not necessarily these things that I have on my mind. The Bible says that God's people are united in Jesus Christ. And while we may have a tough time seeing that here and now, that unification the more we pray together, the more we will become what we truly are, united in Christ. And we are more than actually just united in Christ. We are united with Christ. It reminds me of the Lord's Prayer. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, Our Father. Now, he could have said, My Father. He could have said, Your Father. But by saying, Our Father, Jesus was placing us with him in prayer. So when we pray, we join Jesus, who Romans tells us is even praying now for us. He's always interceding for his saints. Matthew 18, 20, we're told where two or three are gathered in his name. There Jesus is with them in a special way. In fact, the church is a much like a model ship or a model airplane. I'm not sure how many of you still do that or did that in the day. Of course, you buy a model plane or model ship kit. You have all the parts. It's all there. But if you try just putting it together by it on their own, it's going to fall apart. What you need, of course, is some glue. Glue is what keeps everything sticking together and keeps things in right order. 
Prayer is the glue of the church. It keeps us together and keeps things in the right order as well. Why should we pray together? It's because corporate prayer is primary to the church. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And of course, in its context, Jesus was referring to the temple, which has long since been destroyed. In fact, it, was, it wasn't that much longer after that day. It was destroyed in 72 AD and it's been destroyed since. But listen to what we're told in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And that means if your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, Jesus asks you, is your house a house of prayer? 2 Corinthians 6, 16, we're told, for we together are the temple of the living God. Thus, when people say, you know, church is in a building, it's the people. It's true. We are the temple of the living God. And so the question for us, Jesus, Jesus would have is, are we a house of prayer? We must be because corporate prayer is primary to the church. Now, a sermon on praying together can only rightly conclude if we actually pray together. And this being also the last sermon in this series on prayer, our next 10 to minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes is going to be the capstone of our time together. If you'll pull out your bulletins, you'll see we're going to pray. We're going to pray in kind of a specific order. We're going to begin with just prayers of praise. Then we'll have a time of silent confession. And then if you had those prayer requests that we usually do in the middle of the service, I encourage you to pray those requests. And then we'll finish with words of thanksgiving. So this will not just be me praying up here. This will be all of us. So I encourage you, if you would like to pray, pray. Pray nice and loud. And um, let us join together in prayer together as our Lord calls us to do. Let us pray. Our Father, we begin by praising you because it is right to do so. It is right for us to direct our worship to you and to give you thanks for you are good and you are here with us this morning. And we, and we praise you for that. Father, as we praise you, we think of both your loving, your steadfast goodness towards us, but also the fact that you are holy, that you are righteous. And Father, that sinners cannot stand before your presence. And only because of the blood of Jesus Christ may we stand before you even now. So Father, as we silently confess our sin before you, hear now the prayers of your people and forgive us as we confess our sin to you.
We have confessed our sins individually. Let me encourage you, church, to pull out your hymnals and turn to the very back, and together we will confess our sin, generally speaking. The back cover, so it's the hard part, the very, very back. You should see there saying general confession. Let us pray together, church. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O accord, God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. And if there's any specific prayer request you have to the Lord that you would have shared during the normal time, please take it straight to the Lord in prayer. And let us pray together. All of our uh, requests and intercessions for others. I pray for those who don't know you, Lord, that this be the year, the day, the hour, that they would better understand who you are and what you have done for them. Yes. Father, I pray that you watch over the few that help my co worker Porter. Yes. Father, we pray for the Jerome Equestrian Outreach Center. We pray for Leslie Gov and um, all the volunteers that she has working for her. We pray a special blessing this season. They would have all that they need physically, materially, uh, financially, and personnel-wise to continue to uh, minister to the youth uh, in this area and even in uh, from inner, all the way from inner city Detroit. And Father, we pray also for our deacons, Terry, Bernie, Brad, Luann, and Linda. We thank you for their uh, the gifts of leadership and guidance and wisdom that you have given them and encouragement as well. We thank you for their willingness to serve your church. Let us conclude our time of prayer together by giving thanks. Whatever the Lord has placed on your heart that you are feeling most grateful for this morning. Share it, bring it to the Lord, and give thanks.
Lord God, I am so thankful for all the children. I'm thankful that little, there's little hearts reaching out to you. But also, I'm very thankful that you brought little Tony mm -hmm. home from the hospital, Lord yes. Jesus. We are so grateful that he is continuing to grow and do well. And I thank you for the little foster child that our son and daughter-in-law are caring for, Anna. Another friend. Lord, you have something special for these lives in the years to come. And we give you thanks for bringing mm -hmm. these children to us. Yes. Lord, we thank you for Beverly Wilson. Mm -hmm. She's been a, a very good friend to, to our church and to many of us personally. Um, want to thank you for the pain relief that she has gotten lately and she's enjoying life hopefully again um, as best she can and yes. we just thank you Lord for what you are doing for her. love and support and fun that we enjoy with each other. Father, it's never a new word that I've been taught since the beginning of your creation. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the world you created for us and just the natural beauty of our world. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that you are willing lovingly willing to go to Calvary on our behalf. Heavenly Father, we could continue on all morning, all afternoon, all evening, listing off the things that we are thankful for. Father, we will conclude our time rightly by not just saying we are thankful, but by singing to you out of thankful and joyful hearts a hymn of thanksgiving. And so we pray that you would be pleased with it, that you would uh, continue to show your favor upon us, and may we go this week, especially on this Thanksgiving Thursday, may we celebrate you with all thankfulness, we pray all this. And God's people said, Amen. Let us join together in a hymn of thanksgiving. Our final hymn this morning, number 435, Come, ye thankful people, come. 435, please stand for able. Come, ye thankful people, come. Oh, I'm sorry, what is the number? 559. 559, sorry, I got the wrong number. 559. Thank you.
quite give the benediction. Uh, let me invite John and Sue and Andrea back here with me. Hear now the benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Go with thankful hearts in his peace and love and grace today. Amen.
Take your picture. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 We have like a picture of the other one. Not a bad man, but. Hi, Joy. Look, we got like a little bit of a. Yeah, we can put it on. 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 So I don't think it's going to be So you guys heard it. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's the same thing. Yeah. 36 plus years. I know. I knew it. 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 I